Welcome to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Today, we're going to be looking at scammers claiming to be Amazon or other big companies. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Ryan Lippy is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General's Dave Yost office. Today, we're going to be talking about some things that I didn't know was happening. Ryan, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Oh, great to be with you. Thanks so much again for the opportunity to educate your viewers. There's uh, some scammers out there that are representing Amazon and other big companies. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, as we've talked about before, imposter scams are nothing new, but they seem to be heating up when it comes to impersonating big companies. Uh, We've seen a lot of impersonations of Amazon, Apple, um, Norton Antivirus, uh, PayPal, big companies like that, hoping they'll catch people that actually do business with those companies and scare them to death, telling them that a large amount of money has been charged and to call back right away if you need to uh, cancel the charge. Just a bunch of lies uh, to get personal information and or money out of unsuspecting consumers. And especially uh, during holidays and things like that, they're pumping up the uh, They're pumping up the volume of these calls, I'm sure, hoping to catch people that may have actually uh, bought something or used their account recently. Now, you have uh, some information uh, from the OhioProtects.org. Yeah, OhioProtects.org is the website for the Ohio Attorney General's Office Consumer Protection Section. And that's where I work. So why don't we... um, Why don't we take a look at the press release that was issued from our office, from Attorney General Dave Yost, about this kind of scam, where we give lots of tips and further insight into how consumers can see the red flags of these kinds of uh, fraudulent activities. It's um, ohioprotects.org, or you can go to the bigger website, www.ohioattorneygeneral.gov. And from ohioattorneygeneral.gov, you simply click on media and scroll down the press releases to the one we issued on November 22nd, 2021, where we talk about scammers claiming to be Amazon or other big companies. And as the attorney general illustrates, uh, Um, Even the Federal Trade Commission at the national federal level has pointed out that there are a variety of Amazon Amazon imposter scams, uh, many involving claims that a consumer has ordered an expensive product or service and that they are filling phone lines to consumers around the country. Companies like Amazon and some of the other big retailers uh, have established some kinds of Uh, preventative uh, measures from being scammed? Well, you know, the the scammers always like to stay ahead of the game. So just where you thought you've nailed them uh, and gotten rid of one type of scam, they come up with a variety of other variations or they twist it around a little bit to go around whatever preventive measures have uh, that we or the Amazon have tried to put in their way. You know, in this case, they're simply making cold calls to consumers, which uh, is very difficult to control. I mean, it's so easy these days for global imposters, even in faraway places like Nigeria and Ghana. I mean, they can get a hold of international calling capabilities over the internet through their, through their computer. They can get dialing software, They can get caller ID spoofing where they can change the phone number that appears on a consumer's caller ID. And those are all tools in their toolbox to commit these types of imposter scams where they call up, they claim to be Amazon and they they want your notice right away. 
um, to the fact that uh, you bought an iPhone or you bought something else that's very expensive that's charged being charged to you and uh, to give them a phone call if you dispute the charge. Now, of course, they're banking on everybody disputing the charge and getting a phone call from um, unsuspecting consumers. They'll probably even answer the phone as Amazon or Norton or PayPal or uh, Apple, whoever they claim to be with. But um, when they answer, they're probably still from a phony call center that um, wants your personal information and your money. Do these scammers also know your uh, purchase history uh, from Amazon or your banking records? Probably not. Um, they're not that savvy and they throw out millions of calls Um at a time, it seems like. So for them to have any kind of uh, details about every, about all these consumers is probably not, uh, not the case. Uh, they just try to catch as many unsuspecting consumers in their big, broad net as they can. So even if they get 1% or a half a percent of customers to return their phone call, um, they pay very little for um, phone services, and especially through the internet and through um, voice over internet protocol, VoIP phones. So um, with, with so much, so little money at stake, they just scam and scam and scam until somebody finally forks over their personal information or their money. Uh, one thing that they may do is try to get you onto uh, onto the websites to give them access to your device, your computer, your tablet, your smartphone. They'll want to get. They might want to get access to that in order to supposedly credit your account, and they may do something crafty like give you too much money in your account, uh, and then ask for part of it back. Um, they play all kinds of games with numbers and graphic files and all kinds of shenanigans to try to show you that they're attempting to issue you a refund when, in fact, you probably haven't been charged to begin with. I mean, one clear thing that I would do if I ever got a call from Amazon is to hang up the phone, go to my Amazon account at the legitimate website using my login and password and find out exactly what state my account is in. And if I don't see an iPhone or whatever the expensive item is, they claim, the scammers claim that I purchased, I really don't have any worries. You guys, I can always call Amazon at their legitimate toll-free number. And it's really important that you only use their legitimate phone number because believe it or not, there are scammers out there that are just waiting for phone calls from consumers thinking they have the phone number of Amazon, but really dialing the scam call center. So never call back a number that's been given to you on an answering machine or voicemail that claims to be Amazon. I would always go to the Amazon website, uh, find out uh, what Amazon's toll-free number is only from Amazon's official website and uh, call that number for more information. Scammers like to purchase uh, numbers that are very similar to the other. Like, like for instance, if the last four digits are one, two, three, four, some scammers will purchase the one, two, three, three. Absolutely. Uh, and it's uh, interesting that uh, sometimes when you call that and you miss dial, you're, you're thinking that you're on their, their company, but you're on the scammer. Absolutely. Um, they have what's called fat finger dialing. And I can say that because I have fat fingers. Um, <laughs> fat finger dialing is when you misdial a number. You know, you just mistakenly press a three instead of a four or a nine instead of an eight. And um, yeah, scammers are crafty and might buy phone lines around that toll free number that um, they think will lead to a misdialed phone call. And so imagine the surprise when you call what you think is the real Amazon and you get Amazon on the phone right away. And that, you know, that's one, I think, one red flag of this whole uh, process of communicating with consumers is when they pick up the phone right away. You don't get a recording to please hold. You don't say that they don't tell you the whole time is 10 minutes. They pick up the phone with a heavy accent and says, this is Amazon. How may I help you? 
probably not the customer service relationship that starts off phone calls with the legitimate Amazon company. And same thing for PayPal and Norton and Apple and other companies that have been impostered. And I have seen a lot of uh, phone calls going out for Norton antivirus. Uh, that company has been impostered and been spoofed, and people claim that they're getting phone calls that hundreds of dollars is at stake in terms of renewing their uh, software, their antivirus software subscription. They go out to non-subscribers as well as subscribers, but they just hope that, again, real subscribers will be caught in the net. And they will say, oh, my gosh, what's happening? I don't want to be charged hundreds of dollars. I'm going to call back and cancel. Then they call the toll free number that's a scam call center and they get a scammer on the phone who says, oh, wait a minute, you have to buy a gift card or you have to put money on uh, you know, money transfer or you have to um, give us access to your computer or your device so we can issue you a refund. Never take those types of actions. In fact, let's go through some of the tips that we have in the press release to help consumers deal with these so-called business imposter scams. Uh, first of all, Hang up if you receive a cold call from someone that claims what we're talking about, that you've purchased an item from Amazon or another popular online retailer. You want to call back the legitimate number, not the number they leave on your voicemail. And so customer service contact information is typically found on the website of the real company. So learn or bookmark the legitimate company's website and go to that toll-free number that's listed in the Contact Us page or uh, another page on the official website. Also, you definitely want to examine uh, the details on your online account and any credit card bills to see if there are, in fact, any unauthorized charges. I know with my credit card statements, I go online and I check even in between the statement dates. I'll be continually checking online to see if there are any new or pending charges that look unfamiliar to me. And if there are, I'll call my credit card company and inquire and potentially dispute those charges or have it investigated um, so that I ultimately don't have to pay the bill. Um, also, you never want to allow a stranger remote access to your smartphone or any other electronic device. If the caller claims to need remote access to profit or refund, it is absolutely a scam. You want to be highly suspicious of requests from strangers to buy gift cards. Remember, gift cards are for gifts. Gift cards are not for payment uh, as a uh, part of a refund process or to allegedly stop fraud. I don't know of any party, any real company that would want me to go out and buy a gift card especially a gift card that's not even related to their product or service. So be very careful and know that once you disclose a gift card's PIN number to someone, even over the phone, that person will be able to drain all the money on that card. Does it really depend upon the, the seasons and does it depend upon uh, the, the different ways individuals are, are scamming? Well, the interesting thing about these types of scams is, you know, a vast majority of their phone calls are probably going to voicemail or answering machines. So it's really up to whether the consumer has watched a show like we're on right now or has seen one of my presentations or a presentation of one of our other consumer educators at the attorney general's office as to whether that or maybe read an article on uh, this type of scam. Uh, if the more knowledgeable you are, the less likely you are to fall for these scams. And uh, so it's really tough to tell. I do think some of it may be seasonal. Um, we're talking right now, we happen to be in the holiday season between 2021 and 2022. Uh, people are at home. You know, not as often as they were in 2020, but um, because of COVID, there's still a lot of people working from home, a lot of people accepting live phone calls, a lot of people checking their messages more often. So I would say that this is one of those cir circumstances where it might be prime time for scammers to get back in the game if they've taken some time off um, because of COVID or because they uh, are concerned about themselves and their own environment. But, uh, you know, scammers do a lot of their work 
airport without touching, without caught, without you know any customer physical contact. So really, nothing stops them from calling up numbers, regardless of how many viruses are out there. They're going to keep calling Americans, uh, you know, thousands or millions at a time, hoping that people will take the bait. They'll catch Americans in their net. And people will be scammed out of providing their personal information and their hard-earned money. Uh, certainly, if you want to report a scam, as we say in the press release on the screen, if you report a scam, contact a legitimate retailer through their contact information. Make sure they know about the scam and make sure you go to the Ohio Attorney General's Help Center. And the best place to go to get to our Help Center is www dot ohio protects dot org or simply give us a call at 800-282-0515 and the reason why consumers would call, should call us is number one it's really good to just be in the practice of reporting scams to our office we want to hear from consumers we want to know what they know and and hear about the phone calls that they get or the scam emails that they get uh, because it helps us educate consumers and learn from uh, what they're seeing out in their communities and through their phone lines. Also, um, if you have fallen victim to a business imposter scam and you've disclosed personal identifying information, our office has an identity theft basics publication that will help you protect your identity from being stolen based on um, getting that information in the wrong hands. And if you are truly a victim of identity theft, we even have a, um, a identity theft unit within the Ohio Attorney General's Consumer Protection Section that will be able to rectify the effects of some types of identity theft. So it's really important. You might call the toll-free number to report a scam, as well as get actual one-on-one -on -one services through either our complaint handling or our identity theft unit. So very important phone number, very important website, um, 800 282 0515 in ohioprotects.org. You know, one of the uh, things you've been helping to educate individuals is spoofing, uh, neighborhood spoofing. And uh, b before we look at their, their video, uh, which you have on your uh, uh, website, uh, wh what is neighborhood spoofing? Well, um, plain old generic spoofing is when someone calls up a consumer and uh, uses spoofing technology that allows them to change the caller ID number that appears on the consumer's caller ID screen. And a lot of people are very confused about how they seem to get phone calls from their area code, their uh, exchange, almost their phone number even. And the way that that usually happens is not so much scammers buying the actual phone line or accessing the actual phone line, but through caller ID spoofing, just hiding the number they're really calling from and telling you through your caller ID signal that um, they're calling from a local number or they're calling from Washington, D.C., or they're calling from your own neighborhood. And when they use your same area code and your same first three numbers of your local phone number, that's what's called neighborhood spoofing or neighbor spoofing. So it's when somebody calls you and the number is right close to your own local number or the same exchange or maybe even one digit off. In fact, we've had some consumers report to us that their own phone number was on their caller ID. Now, I know there's a scary movie out there where there's the line that uh, uh, that call is coming from inside the house. Uh, that is probably not happening. If that does happen, call the police. But um, usually if you're getting a phone call from yourself, it is simply caller ID spoofing. Um, trying to hide the phone number of the real culprit and uh, getting you to answer the phone by seeing a local number that you're very familiar with. And that's the whole idea behind spoofing is to get you to answer the phone, make you inquisitive, make you wonder whether maybe it's somebody you know. They'll do anything it takes to pick up that phone. You, you have an excellent video. Uh, let's, let's play that. 
Ever wonder why you get so many calls from people you don't know in your area code? Chances are those calls actually aren't coming from anywhere near you. Today's technology allows callers to change the phone number that appears on the receiver's caller ID. It's known as spoofing, and scammers do it because someone who might not ordinarily pick up a call may answer if the number looks familiar. In neighborhood spoofing, the incoming call might have your same area code, and the next three numbers might even match yours, but that call can come from anywhere. Other forms of spoofing try to make a scam look legitimate. A call from someone pretending to be from the IRS looks more convincing if it appears to be coming from Washington, D.C. New laws aim to combat spoofing, but those tools are still being developed and they alone won't block illegal robocalls. The best way to fight spoofing? Just don't answer. Uh, at ohioprotects.org, you have a lot of really good um, videos and then there's a lot of really good information that we as consumers can can really think about and, and uh, better understand how we're capable of getting scammed. Absolutely. And I will encourage people, especially um, if they have a complaint against the business, if they want to report a scam, if they need identity theft help, um, to jump on the website. But uh, just as good of a reason is if you're concerned about robocalls. As you may have seen um, on, the, on the front page of the website, at least, at ohioprotects.org, there are lots of videos that specifically deal with robocalls, how we're taking action to fight the robocalls. Now, we can only do so much as a state-level agency. And Dave Yost wants, as attorney general, wants Ohio to be the toughest state for robocallers to operate in. And that's what we're looking towards every day to get rid of those darn phone calls for Ohioans of all ages. They're vulnerable to scams. Um, these, these fraudsters are violating the do not call law many times, um, truth and caller ID laws other times, and they're simply a nuisance and they're abhorrent. So we really want uh, consumers to join us in our effort to fight robocallers, not answer the phone if they don't recognize the number. And if they do answer the phone and it's a robocall, to report that at www.ohioprotects.org. One of the things that I found on my iPhone, I'm getting more and more, not necessarily robocalls, but robotext. Absolutely. And feel free to, um, to remark about those texts um, through our complaint handling and the robocall reporting mechanism at ohioprotects.org. I get a barrage of um, what I call spam text messages as well. Um, some of them are phishing which they actually call smishing when it's through huh. um, text messaging. But a lot of times uh, you may get a dangerous link or um, a dangerous type of communication from someone um, impostering a company or impostering law enforcement, telling you you need to click on a link. And that link may very well infect your computer with malicious software if you do yeah. click on the link. And if it doesn't do that, They'll probably tell you that they, they, they need personal information from you at a website that that link goes to, which can only help to uh, continue the trade of the scam artist. So if you get a text message that looks suspicious, um, you can certainly call the legitimate phone number of whoever claims to have sent that message. If it's a big company like a Microsoft or the Social Security Administration, uh, give them a direct phone call through their legitimate toll free number that you have find through the through their official website. Um, uh, and then you can certainly report that at OhioProtects.org. And the other website uh, that has a lot more information from the state of Ohio Attorney General's office? Yeah, our full website with all 33 sections of the Attorney General's office represented on it is www.ohioattorneygeneral.gov. That's www.ohioattorneygeneral.gov. Dot G -O -V. And that's the entire website. So if you're doing some type of uh, background report on the attorney general's office or a book report or something like that and want to know about the plethora of different kinds of laws that we enforce and work that we do, um, ranging from law enforcement at the, uh, the Ohio um, Bureau of Criminal Investigation and Identification all the way to 
our consumer protection section, you can certainly go to our main website and there are toll-free numbers on there. And there's even a chat function on ohioattorneygeneral.gov. So during business hours, you may be able to even speak uh, or chat one-on-one -on -one with someone from our constituent services section in real time through that chat program. We, we only have a minute or two left. Uh, to sort of summarize, I, I think uh, whether it's the holidays or it's July, um, robocalls are here to stay for a, a while. And scamming, if it's not during the holidays, occurs throughout the, uh, the year. So how about some words of wisdom to sort of summarize um, the discussion? Yeah, scammers do work 365 days a year. They um, are always applying their trade. They're perfecting it. They're finding out what, what makes us tick, what news items to watch out for. They may be a little more prevalent when they know people are home, like during COVID, during the holiday season, during spring break, things like that. May pump up the numbers a little bit. But the important thing is if you get a call from someone who claims to be Amazon, who claims to be Norton, who claims to be Apple, or you get an email or a text message from one of those big companies, realize that it very well may be a scam and be very, very skeptical before you provide any personal information or any kind of money payment to them, especially if they're asking for a gift card. That is a recipe of a scam artist. And so if you have any questions about the legitimacy of these companies, Give a call to the company itself using their legitimate phone number that you have found online through their official website, like Apple.com, Microsoft.com. Um, Norton Antivirus has, a, has their own website. Uh, there are folks at Amazon.com manning the phones during normal business hours. They have chat functions. They've got a lot of ways to get a hold of them legitimately. Just be sure never call back someone who claims to be part of one of those companies through a phone number they simply leave on your voicemail or answering machine. It's too dangerous because most likely it's a scam artist. We're, we're talking with Ryan Lippy. Ryan Lippy is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost's office. Ryan, it's always a pleasure, and I really appreciate all the information your office provides. Great. Thanks so much. Glad to join you again. Thanks so much.